In today's video, I would like to check out one of the smaller and less used weapon classes from GURPS Ultratech, the microwave weapons. While heavy mounted microwave weapons actually appear at TL8, GURPS Hitech does not have any examples, so we will have to do with the Ultratech TL9 versions. These weapons are non lethal and they are divided into two groups microwave area denial weapons and microwave disruptors. Microwave area denial weapons, also known as MADs, are riot control weapons that heat up the target's skin without causing any actual burns. They deliver an HT-based affliction attack without an armor divisor and with a penalty to the HT roll that depends on the specific weapon. MADs are ranged cone attacks. Being cone attacks, they use special rules for area and spreading attacks. You can attack many targets at once, and the only way to defend is to dodge out of the way by retreating or diving for cover. DR is applied as a bonus to the resistance roll, but since this is an area attack, DR works differently. Use the average between the torso DR and DR of the least protected hit location. If the victim fails to defend and resist, he suffers from the agony affliction for as long as he is within the beam and for one second afterward. This seems to imply that you can keep the beam active and the victim won't even need to roll to resist every second. You should remember that agony is an incapacitating condition, so the victim will not be able to move out of the way once he fails a resistance roll. Since this is a heat-based attack, how does it interact with creatures that have a higher temperature comfort zone or temperature tolerance? There are no rules for that, but I guess that could provide a situational bonus. There are only two MADs on the weapons table, a portable version and a tactical mounted version. The portable one weighs and costs a lot, but has a good energy capacity and accuracy. Personally, I have never seen them used, but it seems that they can be effective against unarmored or lightly armored targets. Unfortunately, the beam and laser design system article does not have MAD beams. So these two weapons is all you've got to work with. The second weapon subcategory is the microwave disruptors. While the MADs are designed as non-lethal weapons against organic targets, microwave disruptors are non-lethal weapons against electronics. Basically, they are EMP weapons. Just like the MADs, they are ranged cone attacks that deliver an HT-based affliction, but this time they only affect electronics and those with an electrical disadvantage. Since it is mostly intended to be used against inanimate objects, the target adds its size modifier to its resistance roll. Unlike MADs, microwave disruptors are contact agents, and since they also are area attacks, this means that they ignore DR unless the target is sealed. For this purpose, unshielded radar or communication antennas, power lines and communication cables make the target unsealed. Instead of causing agony, microwave disruptors simply shut down the target or render it unconscious. If we look at the weapons table, we'll see four entries, twice as many as MADs, and three of them are portable. So you have more options, and they are much more affordable. However, they have LC2, unlike LC3 of MADs. Now, how effective are they? All combat robots in GURPS Ultratech have sealed and DR high enough to render microwave disruptors useless. However, computers and other electronics might be unsealed, and a gadget is assumed to have HT10 by default or HT-12 if rugged. DR typically ranges from 2 to 4, so even if the gadget is sealed, you still have a decent chance of shutting it down. If you look at the cyber shells from Gerbstrand's Human Space shell tech, you will see that not all cyber shells are sealed, and even if they are, they don't have the DR as high as combat robots, so the disruptors might be effective against them. Finally, you should keep in mind that almost everything is electronic on TL9 and above, including weapons, so you might want to use a microwave disruptor to disable all electrical gadgets on a given subject or subjects, 
since this is an area attack after all. It might require a lot of rolls to resolve, so sometimes it might be a good idea to roll once for all the equipment to save time. It also seems that microwave disruptors should work well against nanobot or microbot swarms. Pyramid 326 says that all microwave weapons divide range by 1000 underwater. GURPS Dungeon Fantasy Monsters 4 Dragons introduces a new maneuver, all-out attack cone, that can be used with both MADs and microwave disruptors. And that's it. These are interesting but situational weapons, and I think that there are some problems. There are no rules for making such weapons with a beam weapon design system, and the assortment of weapons in GURPS Ultratech is not very broad. The book only has TL9 versions, but what would TL10 or even more advanced versions look like? They could either be lighter or impose a higher penalty to the resistance roll. That would make them more relevant at higher TLs. I'm sure that it is possible to reverse engineer some of the formulas and expand the beam weapon creation system. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time.